What's going on everybody and welcome to Wrestlemania 37. We are inching closer and closer to the end of this project and the beginning of Wrestlemania 40. As you can tell, the logo looks very close to the logo of the previous Wrestlemania. The previous Wrestlemania was supposed to be in Tampa, Florida. It was moved to the Performance Center because of COVID. So they decided to run it back at Tampa for real this time. So they kind of kept the same themes. They kind of kept the same ideas, the same uh, setup that they were going to use originally. And we got the Tampa Bay, Florida Wrestlemania. This WrestleMania is a direct contrast from last WrestleMania. It's the first time since before last WrestleMania that fans were back. Up until this WrestleMania, fans were only through the, the Thunderdome era. So they're like all the, the, the pictures of fans that were, that were there um, around the ring. This is the very first event that fans are back in um, since all of that happened. So this was a huge deal for this WrestleMania, but it also meant this WrestleMania was a smaller crowd. It was only allowed to have like 25,000 people, uh, in the arena because of COVID restrictions that were still in effect, but they were able to have people in the stadium. And that is the most important part here. So again, we do still have a stacked card. Rob's notes are going to be in two parts, night one and night two. Uh, they're going to be off there on the side. Um, I have my notes here besides me. My ratings are 10 through 0, Rob's ratings are 8 through F. This is WrestleMania 37. I certainly would hope you guys know how this works by now. Let's jump right to it with the opener for night 1, which is the WWE title match between Bobby Lashley with MVP, who is the champion coming in, versus Drew McIntyre. Now, of course, previously, Drew McIntyre won the title. Um... This was kind of his redemption route, if you will, to try to win it again in front of fans, and he unfortunately fails to do so. Bobby Lashley would retain. Uh, a really solid opening match that the crowd was super into. Of course, makes sense, given it's the first match in front of a live crowd in over a year. Uh, the crowd needed this. Lashley and McIntyre relished in the crowd at the beginning. A lot of building up to the crowd, a lot of taunting, a lot of just, you know, hyping them up and just enjoying the fact they're in front of uh, fans again for the first time in over a year. Um, there's no highlight spots in this match. The match overall had a great flow, great work rate, a little downtime. Both wrestlers look strong and dominant from start to finish. Not an all-time classic, but a solid opener. I gave this match a 7 out of 10. Rob agrees, gave this match a B. It's unfortunate that Drew McIntyre didn't get his championship win in front of fans, but I also understand why they were trying to give Bobby Lashley a bit of a push. So, I can understand. 7 out of 10. Next up, we have the WWE Women's Tag Team Number 1 Contendership Turmoil Match. A uh, new team enters when one is eliminated to face the tag team champions on night two. That is a mouthful. <laughs> it, is, it is not a good match. Um, Naomi and Lana versus Billy Kay and Carmella start the show. Very basic match. No real chemistry or action, unfortunately, resulting in a heel foot on ropes finish to eliminate Naomi and Lana. Riot Squad joins the fray. Um, oh, I guess I should probably tell you who was all in this match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Natalia and Tamina would go on to win. Uh, they faced Billy Kay and Carmella, Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose, Lana and Naomi and the Riot Squad, which is Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot. So back to where I was here. Riot Squad joins the fray. Uh, the officials catch their heel attempt to pin Liv Morgan, which results in ear shattering shrieking. And Liv Morgan hold Billy Kay down for Ruby to hit a sort of swanton on her, I guess. Um, so far, Two pinfalls have happened, and it's been garbage so far. Nothing nothing good, nothing fun, nothing engaging yet. Um, Billy and Carmella are eliminated. Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose come in. The commentators try to hype this up, but the moves are so slow to develop. Commentators are trying to call this a classic. It's not. It's been... It's bad. Uh, the timing seems off. Ruby just seems out of position for half of her sections. Neither Mandy or Dana are selling for Liv. It's like Liv is hitting them with wet paper towels. It's, it's not good. It looks like crap. Um... D Dana and Mandy joined. It got even worse. Honestly, I, I didn't think it could, but it did. Liv reverses a penitent from Dana Book following a swanton, which makes no sense at all. Uh, then even the announcer gets confused. The whole segment was a mess. The, the announcer thought that Liv got pinned, but in reality, Dana got pinned because she rolled her. It, it, it was it was a mess. It, it didn't flow well. It didn't look good. Um, and then on top of that, you, you then had... Um, 
Uh, Natalia and Tamina join in, and, and it's all slow. Liv looks amazing, but she's the only remote standout in this entire thing. Uh, Tamina hits the Superfly Splash since her father was Superfly Snooka, and they win. They get to fight Baszler and Nia Jax on night two. As you can see, this match was not good. Not good at all. Good moves, flow was terrible. Occasional good move, but the flow was terrible. I gave this match a 3 out of 10. Rob agrees, gave this match a D as well, so that is where this match is going to go at a three. Next up, we have Cesaro and Seth Rollins, an amazing story that was simple while also being amazing. Cesaro had never had a singles match ever at WrestleMania, so clearly that means he had never won at WrestleMania. Seth Rollins had multiple WrestleMania moments that he was using to gloat over Cesaro. An amazing back and forth for these two. Um, Rollins claimed it was because he wasn't worthy of a solo match. That was the whole kind of premise setting up here. Uh, these two had a great work rate, chemistry together, entertaining from start to finish. I loved the stomp fake out into a crazy shoulder check. It was fantastic timing. It, it didn't look like either one of them had a stagger to get it to time right. Um, 23 swings, which was, uh, breaking his record where he, you know, grabs and swings you around. He did it 23 times broke his previous record of 22 it was super fun and and it set up an awesome shoulder spin slam move for the finish excellent work i gave this match an 8 out of 10 i really enjoyed this rob also enjoyed this match gave it a b so um yeah that will be an 8 out of 10 it was a great it was a great match honestly i thoroughly enjoyed it and i kind of honestly the one thing that this wrestlemania review series has taught me is that i really miss cesaro he was he was fucking amazing in almost every match I've seen him in. Even the not-so-great uh, tag team match where um, Strowman got the kid to come in, Cesaro still looked decent in that match against Strowman. So, I mean, I really miss Cesaro in the WWE, and I would love to see Cesaro make a comeback. I don't know if that's a hot topic or whatnot, but I would love to see Cesaro make a comeback. Next up, we have AJ Styles and Omos versus The New Day, Xavier and Kofi. Uh, the debut of Omos. Effectively a handicap match against Styles as New Day are quirky fun heels in this one. Uh, taunting Styles about not being a true tag team wrestler, etc. It was a fun little match and eventually became a squash match when Omos came in. A great debut for the big man. Established him as a fun, entertaining monster that would quickly go downhill as the year would go on. Um, the phenomenal forearm off the back of Omos was amazing. It was short, did its job, told a good story. I gave it a 6 out of 10. Again, a little bit too controlling of AJ Styles for a while. I get it from a story aspect. It made sense. Doesn't mean that it's going to make the match good. So I gave it a 6 out of 10. As you can see, Rob agrees, gave this match a C. Well, he gave this match a C, which is a 5, but the .5 rule is going to make it a 6 out of 10. So that is where we are going to go. Omos and AJ Styles are the new tag team champions. I forgot this match was for the championship. I did not put that down. But yes, Omos and AJ Styles won uh, the Raw tag team champions. Next up, we have a steel cage match featuring the aforementioned Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon. A shitty fucking feud. Uh, that resulted in a great payoff at the end of this match, but God, I'm so sick and tired of these. We saw this similar with Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax a few manias ago. These bullying, you're too stupid, you're too fat, you're too dumb. It's not original. It's cheap heat. It's not a good story. It's, it's, it's bad. You know, it's just, it's, it's like you didn't have any original ideas, so you decided to use something really dumb no pun intended, uh, to put heat on Shane McMahon to make this match work. Um, the beginning of this match was okay. Not the most exciting uh, cage match of all time. Business does pick up at the end. Braun Strowman rip... Uh, uh, Shane McMahon is like climbing down the cage. Braun Strowman rips the cage open to grab Shane McMahon, throw him off the top of the cage... That was the best spot in the match. At least it's an iconic spot, so you can at least give it that. Um, it doesn't really do enough to make this match good. I would say without that spot, it's this match is a 4 out of 10. With that spot, this match is a 5 out of 10. Rob, however, strongly disagrees with me. Rob enjoyed this match a whole lot more than I did. 
I gave this match a 5 out of 10, he gave it a 7. So, this is going to average out, in between the two of them, to a 6. So, yeah, and Rob seemed to be much more impressed with this than I was, but hey, I will accept it. That's why both of us review these, so that you don't get just one side of an idea. So, 6 out of 10, that's where you'll go. Next up, we have Bad Bunny and Damian Priest versus John Morrison and The Miz. Arguably one of the best celebrity matches of all time, but don't let me just tell you. Me and Rob don't ever talk about these quirky celebrity matches too often. We've had a few of them, but we've never really talked about one. So, let's make an exception for today's match review. Welcome everyone to WrestleMania 37 match review. I am Nomad and I am here with Tito. Neither one of us are rock stars, but you know who is a rock star? Actually, was John Morrison technically a rock star? I mean, he played a rock star character. Kind of. Didn't, what? Didn't John Morrison play like a rock star type character at one point? Morrison? Nah, I think you're thinking of the rated R... Like Zack Ryder and... No, nope, uh, no, nope, definitely talking about John Morrison. Anyway, regardless, um, Bad Bunny is here. Not a rock star, but he is a hip-hop artist. Uh, and he, He's a... Oh, God. He's a reggaeton. Anyway, he, he's a celebrity. Uh, and he is easily one of the best celebrities that we've had in wrestling, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are my notes for this match of Bad Bunny and Damian Priest versus Miz and Morrison. Before you go into detail, so I thought about this. So when we were talking about the Ronda Rousey match, mm-hmm. and how you asked if it's like the greatest uh, debut, mm-hmm. the Ronda Rousey Kurt Angle match, mm-hmm. I would say uh, this one, Bad Bunny. Would you consider this a debut though? He isn't a full time wrestler. Right, but neither was Ronda Rousey when she made her WrestleMania debut. I don't think she was, at least. She was a full-time wrestler after that. She had the best rookie year ever that led to the main event of the following year. Anyway, uh, this is an amazing match. Um, Bad Bunny is one of the best celebrity guests ever. I loved his backlash match against Damian Priest, and Mm -hmm. I love seeing his opening match here. Another banger, yes. I honestly, I think the backlash match against Damian Priest is even better, but obviously we're not reviewing mm-hmm. that. Um, he does great at the beginning. The typical heel control segment between Miz and Morrison on Bad Bunny, which was to get the crowd fired up. Uh, they paired him with two great sellers and two of the safest workers in Morrison and Miz. Uh, Priest's Mania debut is also fantastic. After Priest comes in the match, kicks in a second gear. Both Priest and Bunny work great together and create an electric match that's both entertaining for the fans, great to see Bunny excel, and is a legit great match. Bunnies can fly, and Bunnies can create great matches. The Bunny Destroyer outside to Morrison was insane, and the crossbody onto Miz on Priest's shoulders was awesome. 8 out of 10 would love to see more Bad Bunny in the WWE. Mm-hmm. So, I believe you also gave this match a B. I gave it a B plus. Yes, so this match is obviously going to be an 8 out of 10 for us. Um, what did you think of the match? What were some of the, the things that stood out to you? And do you think that Bad Bunny realistically could go full-time if he wanted to? Based on his build and stuff like that. Or do you think he's a Logan Paul where he's going to have to heavily um, rehearse his matches to really be able to do them? Oh, excuse me. Um, I think Logan Paul, from a full-time standpoint, it would be a better fit than Bad Bunny. But I feel like Bad Bunny, over time, would kind of come to his own. Maybe not as fluid. Um, I mean... The the spots in the match, you know, like the, the dive off of the rope with Damian Priest and all that, like, those are the spots that obviously stick out the most. Mm-hmm. So, like, you already talk about them, and I'm like, okay, well, there goes that. Cool. <laughs> That's it. Video done. <laughs> I like... mean, the bunny, des- <laughs> the, bunny, the bunny Destroyer was fucking fantastic. 
Yeah. That Bunny Destroyer was amazing to the point where that's his finisher in the game. Um, that was amazing. Um, I, t- I also thought he had great chemistry with everyone. Which was is that was that the move that he did at the other turnbuckle? No, the, at dest- the beginning. The, no, so a destroyer is basically where you 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 basically put them underneath your legs and then you flip, and both of you flip and they land on their head. Oh, a Canadian face buster. Yes, yeah. it's it's called a Canadian destroyer. Oh yeah, but yeah. he 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 kind of did his own variation and mm. it's the bunny destroyer. Um, <laughs> But it is fan. It was fantastic. Um, but I thought his I thought his chemistry with everyone was really good. His team chemistry with Damian Priest was good. His combat pre- uh, chemistry with mm. uh, Miz and Morrison, and again, Miz and Morrison are great sellers and are great workers in general. I mean, I can say the Miz is a great worker. I don't really know much about Morrison because a when he his first tenure in WWE, that's when I really wasn't watching. Um, and even then, it was just occasional magic. What, you good? I was trying not to yawn. Keep going. <laughs> I was fighting a yawn. Dude, you don't feel it. Just, just keep going. <laughs> but then, you know, his second time around, you know, this is, you know, COVID. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I was working like I didn't slow down on work. You know what I mean? So I right. didn't, I didn't really, you know focus on wrestling i was focusing on that on top of you know learning like a new craft you know what i mean i wasn't worried about watching wrestling at that given time mm-hmm. uh, so i i really miss morrison in a good chunk of wrestling here i mean obviously the bloodline's not in this wrestlemania i mean there's like the the makings of it right mm-hmm. what isn't the main event the well, main event's bloodline i meant to say like what we know as the bloodline today was not. It was the start. It was it was Jey Uso and Paul Heyman. Well, yeah, but I'm saying like with Solo, like. Well, yeah, the obviously thing. they add on to it. Yeah, yeah, but but like I I had no idea that that stuff even really happened until, um, I think you had mentioned it in one of our Facebook chats, and I was like, what the heck. And then that's when you explained it, and then you had sent me a video, mm-hmm. like, check this out. Kind of like how we did with David. Right. Okay. And anyways. But, yeah, this match overall, um, again, it's a B plus. I thought this match was fucking phenomenal. Bad Bunny looked dope on this match, on his other matches. I don't think it was his best one uh, by any means. The Puerto Rican crowd at Backlash just made that match ten times more fun. 100%. Absolutely. If you haven't watched it, you need to go watch it right after this video. Oh yeah, the Backlash, the back, Backlash match is so good. It's so good. Mm-hmm. But anyway, guys, that's all the time that we have for here. Uh, I don't know how to say back to me in Spanish. Do you know how to say back to me in Spanish? No. You're Peruvian though. I mean, yeah, I know, but that doesn't mean I know how to just speak it willy-nilly. Bad Bunny would be disappointed in you. Mm-hmm. Back to me. Caite la boca. What? I just said shut your mouth, bitch. Oh, okay. Back to me. <laughs> and welcome back, everyone. As I said, I gave this match an 8 out of 10. Rob gave this match a B plus, so he also agreed. Gave this match 8 out of 10, so that is where it's going to go. Congratulations. And finally, the main event of night one. We have the WWE SmackDown Women's title match between Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks, who is a champion, coming in with Bianca Belair getting her WrestleMania moment. Um, Huge moment. This is technically a main event. This is night one's main event. So this is a WrestleMania main event, a second one involving women, and the first involving two African-American women as well. They were extremely emotional over that fact. That fact was not lost on them. Um, definitely good for WWE. Good for the good for them. Excellent for everyone. Um, you can tell how emotional it was, the, which made it so the beginning was a little bit rocky because they were so emotional. But honestly, that emotion turned into a passion and a fiery offense for both women that was amazing to watch. An amazing contest from start to finish. Spectacular back and forth. So much power and technical ability. Counters and submissions. 
Everything these two did was sold perfectly, and there weren't many spots where the flow could have been any better. The iconic hair whip slap heard round the world into the KOD was an electric combination, and that hair whip slap is an iconic move that Bianca Belair smartly saves for big time moments like this. Which is odd, because it's literally just whipping her hair into the opponent, but it, it sound fucking lethal. And it also left a massive whelp, I mean a horrible looking whelp, on Sasha Banks' stomach. Um, the whole match from start to finish was fun, exciting, engaging, and as I said, important. Because it was only the second women's main event, and as I said before, the first featuring two black women. Um, so, a second layer of importance to the advancement of the women's division an advancement as far as representation in the WWE is concerned. And I thought, again, great beginning, good middle, great ending, a great ending that would literally pole vault a surefire Hall of Fame career for Bianca Belair already. This was three years ago, and Bianca Belair has already cemented herself, in my opinion, as a future Hall of Famer. So, absolutely amazing match. Loved it. I gave this match a 10 out of 10 it is a classic you have to watch this match if you can rob agrees gave this match an a so that's where it's gonna go a 10 out of 10 fantastic job ladies moving on to night two in my opinion not as good as night one we shall get into that starting off with this unfortunately disappointing match randy orton versus the fiend i'm not sure what the fuck this match was I'll be honest. Amazing entrance by The Fiend, but the match itself was terrible. Um, about five moves were hit the entire time, lots of holds, leaving the ring, and then it, it, it ended in Alexa Bliss just having the black blood pour from her head, and then an RKO and it's over. Um, you have this, this really dark red light that's illuminating the entire arena the entire time, making whatever moves were going to be hit very hard to see. I'm not sure that they truly checked to see what the lighting was going to look like at this time of day because it clearly wasn't very good. Um, not only that, but you have this lack of euphoria because Bray Wyatt gets fired shortly after this match. So you don't have any conclusion to this storyline with Bianca, uh, with Alexa Bliss. Which is really unfortunate because you had set up a lot of crazy shit. You were literally setting up for a potential Wyatt Six here with Alexa Bliss, and it's gone, unfortunately. Alexa Bliss comes back later on, then she ends up leaving because she gets pregnant. We haven't seen her since because she is still obviously coming back from that pregnancy and coming back from having a kid. So you really never got any type of continuation from here. And of course, as we all know by now, Bray Wyatt unfortunately passed away last year, so we may never see if the plan was to revive this storyline now, and, and it's it's unfortunate. Now, of course, the lack of a storyline conclusion doesn't hurt this match, but this match is already a 1 out of 10 anyway. So it can't make it worse, definitely can't make it better. Uh, it's really unfortunate that this is the last WrestleMania match that we see in Bray Wyatt, and it's unfortunately, unfortunately a flop. Um, I need to update Rob's ratings here so we can actually see what Rob gave this match. And unfortunately, Rob agrees and gave his match an F as well. It, 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 listen, it, it sucks, it really does, but this match isn't good. I don't know whose idea it was to give these two four minutes, or six minutes, or however long it was, I have no idea who booked this match, but unfortunately, it flopped, and that's that's it's it's really sad. I, I would have loved to have seen what he could have done at WrestleMania 39 if the plan was Bobby Lashley versus Bray Wyatt like it looked. I would have loved to have seen that, but unfortunately, um, we won't get to. And I I absolutely have plans to watch the Bray Wyatt documentary, and um, yeah, rest in peace. That's all I can really say to that without getting emotional. I really loved Bray Wyatt. I loved his ideas. I loved the Fiend character. I loved the evolution. I just wish it ended on better terms. But next up, we have Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, who were the tag team champions aforementioned, uh, versus Natalya Tamina, who won the previous match. And good God, this match was terrible. 
Uh, an absolute botch fest. Uh, some at least horrendous selling and poorly executed moves, even if they weren't botches, uh, to start this match off. Natalia and, Tamina, uh, T Natalia and Tamina look out of place the entire time. Naya is probably the worst she's been from a performance standpoint on both runs she had. Uh, obviously, she also ends up getting fired um, and then before she gets brought back uh, recently. But she looked horrible in this match. Uh, definitely the worst she's looked out of both of them, as I said. Uh, Sheena deserved better here. This is a horrible match until the Tamina slam near fall. And even then, it wasn't good. The finish, Natalia watched Naya get tagged by Baszler. Still hit the sharpshooter on Naya. Setting herself up for the, Kafuda uh, 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 the Kirafuda clutch. This match got the second most time on the card. It was bad. 2 out of 10. Rob gave it a D plus, so it's going to end up getting bumped up to a 3 out of 10. But this wasn't a good match at all. Not a good match at all. Just horrible ending. Didn't make sense. And, of course, you had one decent woman in this match, and that was, uh, was Shayna Baszler. So... What are you going to do? Next up, we have two amazing wrestlers, in my opinion. That's Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn, of course, with Logan Paul's introduction to the WWE. Effectively, this was the Kevin Owens and Sami's... Uh, effectively, KO and Sami's greatest hits. Um, but this time, they're on each other. We've seen it before. This is not the first time these two have tangoed, but it's the first time these two have tangoed on WrestleMania. Um, their arsenals are always diverse, but this should have been a 15 minute banger and instead we got a great nine and a half minute match. Uh, a good story was leading into this match and it's a shame these two weren't given the chance to tear the place down because if you gave these two 15 minutes, they absolutely would have. Again, a fun match as is always with these two. I gave it a seven out of 10. Rob agrees, but actually thinks this match was a little bit better. He gave his match an 8 out of 10, so it will get bumped up. I'm completely okay with that because I did thoroughly enjoy this match. And yeah, we will go ahead and move on from there. Next up, we have Sheamus versus Matt Riddle for the United States Championship. Riddle, of course, was holding the title before then. Uh, a great back and forth contest, riddled with botches. Uh, and almost botches that made up for the hard-hitting action and crazy holds. Uh, Riddle, Riddle looked clunky at times. Every time they went to the top rope, something seemed to go wrong that wasn't supposed to go wrong. You could tell that Sheamus was getting frustrated. Um, the white noise off the top rope botched not once but twice, resulting in a very angry normal white noise. The finish was insane. And it honestly saved this match. Uh, Matt Riddle tries to come off the second rope into a sunset flip uh, that sunset his reign uh, as he took a perfectly timed bro kick right to his chin upside down for the win. What could have been a great eight or nine ended up as a six for me solely because of all those botches. Rob disagreed again. He gave his match a B. He gave his match a seven. So the, the point five roll is going to cause it to get bumped up to at seven. Again, I would have given it it had it not been riddled with botches for so much of the match. So I'm, I'm completely okay with that seven. Just would have liked to have seen a bit of a cleaner match for these two. Next up, we have Apollo Crews versus Big E for the Intercontinental Championship in a Nigerian drum match. Big E was the champion coming in, but Apollo Crews would end up winning this match. What seemed to have a great setup and finally a true story and character for Apollo Crews ends up really disappointing here, honestly. Um, nothing creative with the weapon spots, no highlight spots as both impact spots are missed intentionally. It's not like they were botched. They were supposed to miss. But it also involves an interference by Aziz who is terrible. He's, yeah, that's, <laughs> I don't mean to be rude, but it doesn't amount to much in the end. Aziz never develops in anything. It was an unfortunate way for Big E to lose his championship here. What should have been Apollo Crews' coming out party ended up being a blip on the Jabba radar. Big E looks good. Nothing else does. Four out of ten. Again, Rob has been much more favorable on this card than I was. He gave his match a five out of ten. So again, it's going to get bumped up to that five. Whether you agree with me or him, I would love to hear comments down below because clearly me and him are looking at this with very two different lenses right now. He's being much more favorable. Maybe I'm being too negative. I'd love to hear what you think. Next up, we have Rhea Ripley versus Asuka. Uh, a good work rate match that lacked any notable spots. 
effective story or efficient chemistry, unfortunately. Um, it seemed this match got stuck in second gear, as they say, and never developed into the banger these two are more than capable of. Uh, what should have been Rhea crown what should have been Rhea's crowning moment ended up being a decent match with little fanfare. Um, Asuka and Rhea both put on better matches both before and after this match. I would love to see these two run it back again soon, but it's really unfortunate that they just couldn't create the magic that I expect from them in this match. I still gave it a 5 out of 10 because it's still good. It's just not a, a 7 or 8 like I would expect from these two. Rob, again, looked at this with clearer glasses and gave this a 6. So once again, Rob is going to cause this to go up a little bit. I'm not complaining because, again, it's not a bad match. It's just, again, I, I almost felt dejected because I know what they're capable of. And this didn't produce what I was, what I know they're capable of doing. So that's why I gave it a five. So a six is completely fine. Would love to see them get to that eight or nine spot next time these two go at it. And finally, on this bloated car two night event, Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan versus Edge. Turns out the way to make Roman Reigns good is to just make him heal. Uh, he came back as the tribal chief. He won the title comes in here this is his first wrestlemania main event with the title and this was the iconic hit em stack em pin em ending um just like we've said for years roman Reigns needed to go heal this match was easily the best roman reigns match so far the head of the table had helped early before jay uso got taken out by edge and then it became an even better contest edge and brian excelled Roman had great offense, great selling, great exchanges across the entire contest. The crowd inciting Roman to slam Brian into the table. Edge spearing Roman Reigns off the top of the stairs out of nowhere effectively was a great spot. Great camera angle. Um, the double crossface label lock on Roman preventing him from tap but causing enough damage to take him out of the match for a while. All three wrestlers were insanely aggressive and intense. There were so many amazing segments in this match back and forth between the three of them. So many near falls, so many escapes. Triple threat rules actually made this match ten times better, which is something you don't usually see before. Normally it's a crutch that they have to overcome. The triple threat rules made this match ten times better. Of course, this match ends like most Reigns uh, title defenses do, with Jey Uso coming back. Edge destroys Brian with a concerto. Edge ca uh, Jay costs Edge uh, the win. Roman then concertos Edge, stacks him, beats him. Great match, soiled by the same shit we see today, and Uso or Sokoa interference. Regardless, at this point in time, that hadn't spoiled its welcome. So I will forgive it this time. Because, like I said, you didn't see it very often. You just started seeing it because he recently just got Jey Uso on his team. Jimmy's not even back yet. So I will pretend like the repetitive ending doesn't happen because it's not repetitive yet. And I gave this match a 10 out of 10. It is phenomenal. Amazing match, amazing main event, and probably the only A Roman Reigns will ever see from me until I rewatch WrestleMania 39 and see exactly how I feel about that main event now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll get a nine or something from me there. Um, but as of right now, this is the only A Roman has gotten. So we will see how I feel then. But a 10 out of 10 for me. Absolutely classic WrestleMania. Only one bad match. Two tens should make up for it. Let's go ahead and calculate exactly what this WrestleMania is going to end up equaling out to. This WrestleMania averages out to a 6.2 nine a little bit shocked at that rating i'll be perfectly honest with you i i honestly figured this would be a much higher number closer to a seven um but we do have that one that is going to drag this down but hey 6.29 is nothing to sneeze at um definitely a, a an upper echelon um wrestlemania uh, definitely in that c plus category again i'm really shocked based on the card here that we didn't get closer to that uh, seven, but hey, what are you going to do? Anyway, guys, you all have a fantastic night. I'll be back tomorrow with WrestleMania 38. That's right. Tomorrow is 38. We are almost there. Two more reviews to go, and then WrestleMania 40.
Y'all have a fantastic night. I'll see you then.